Beeline is leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers as head coach. They're promoting associate head coach J.B. Bickerstaff to become the full-time head coach. Remember, Beeline was really successful at Michigan, left there to come to the Cavs, and he's been there now, you know, less than one full season. Here's what Cleveland guard Colin Sexton had to say about Beeline. Quote, you know how he is. He's very detail-oriented. Detail, detail, detail. Loves details. And he always wants us to make sure that when we're out there, we're giving it our all. College coaches, you know how they are. They want you to go a thousand percent every second of the day. He's been in college for 20 years, more than that. We've had to tell him, coach, we've got 82 games. We can't kill ourselves. Now, John Bielan is by no means the first college coach to go to the pros and not find great success. It has been tricky in the past. Jerry Tarkanian, one of the all-time legends at UNLV, went to the San Antonio Spurs, lasted just 20 games in the NBA. Before his stints with Kentucky and Memphis, John Calipari was the head coach of the then New Jersey Nets. He won fewer than 40% of his games. Was fired in 1998 when he started 3-17. and 17. Rick Pitino was the head coach of the Knicks and Celtics. Had some success in New York, not a lot in Boston. Ultimately finished with a sub-500 overall record in the NBA. And this is a guy who was in the Hall of Fame. So Grinnell, the notion, I always think it's interesting when the second-year player can say that about a head coach. Colin Sexton, but, but I mean, second-year you know, guy. By, by the standards of that team, yeah. he's sort of a veteran. That's a whole other set Sorry. of problems. But but let's start with you as the basketball guy at the table, Jay. Will is does this mean that the notion that lifer college coaches, guys who are accustomed to that, having the kind of control that you have in college, you don't have in the, in the NBA or the NFL, that that just isn't going to work. Uh, I think for some guys, I mean, Brad Stevens got inserted into a really good situation. Billy Donovan had Russell Westbrook, obviously with OKC. I, I think this position means a lot here, guys. And some coaches micromanage at the collegiate level because you have to. And some other coaches have the disposition of being a little bit more laid back. A laid back approach, I would say a guy like Bill Self. I can see Bill Self being an NBA coach because he doesn't micromanage every situation of the day that these guys go through. And that, I think that's the major difference here. So much of it in the NFL and the NBA, it's it's a player-driven league. And whether you like it or not, the talent of the players and players' comfort to a certain point matters. And so, you know, riding to the game, making sure you're getting your mind right. Guys want to get there at different times. All those kinds of things. We always talk about the devil and the details, but I think it's when you cross the lines, right? Get on the field, get on the court. That's when the details, but all the other, all the extra that coaches try to push on guys, that's got to be intrinsic. Guys got to want that. Exactly. And when you have players do that, that's where your leadership, that's where Tom Brady separates himself, Peyton Manning, Drew Brees. It's not just how good they, it's, it's the leadership they have that everybody else around goes, man, I want to be like that. It's not the coach you go, I want to be like him. You yeah. want to be like the guys who drive you from a player perspective. A couple of years ago, I had the privilege of doing David Blatt's contract. He was a play, uh, coach that won multiple championships over in Europe, and we did the deal where he went to Cleveland. And ironically, he had success early, went to the finals that first year. But he always talked about the coachability of the NBA player, and mm -hmm. his approach had to be markedly different. And obviously, it didn't yes. end well there. And he was frustrated from a standpoint that the European player was more, in his mind, moldable than an NBA player. Well, because in the NBA, you got guys who are making 15, 20 million dollars a year, and as a head coach, John Beeline was making four. Uh, I will say this: I just don't, I don't feel as bad for John Beeline because now all of a sudden he's elevated himself. He's already being in the midst of conversations about is he going to be the next head coach of IU? If what happens to Archie Miller? Is he going to be the next head coach of Texas if Shaka Smart doesn't exist? So I do feel like coaches can do this if they can go up. They're always going to come back. That's down right. They can reinvent. More leverage. The thing is, exactly. understanding college being a head coach is a dictatorship. You tell the players what to do. You're saying hurting cheap, specifically in football, teams of 88. That's right. In the NFL, it's a democracy. The players are making more than the coach. You're not telling a grown man how to tie his shoes and what color socks to wear. It won't last long. Mm. The, the thing about Beeline that stuns me, and again, I, I know him, I like him, and I respect him, but it was so easy to see this not working. Like, I, when it, I remember sitting here the day that story broke. Woj broke it on our show. I remember we were having the conversation. Is that a joke? Like, is that really going to happen mm. at this stage of his life? He's going to try the NBA for the first time. Sometimes when the obvious problem problem becomes the problem, it's the person who made the decision. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports and analysis, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.